All right, what are we going to do here? Van Dyke Brown, maybe a little bit of indigo. Just the way this one was, I thought, no, nah, I won't put it on the usual marble base. I'll just get some nice little raised bulletin board cork base. Now, I'm glad that that was fun, Landrast. I mean, it, it looked really nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did you sew it to uh, Did you sew it to Bithron? Because he would probably be very jealous. Now, yeah, I think Bithron would be very jealous of that. Because, uh, well, you know how much he loves his, his Battletech stuff. At least I think it is. All right, obviously we're going to be getting a lot of our orange going here, right? So not going to really extend this too much into that. So we'll just stick stick to that. How's about we maybe start to think about some other areas here with some brown matter? Yeah, we got a little bit of it here because that gold, right? Gold, here we'll just shove some of that down into here. So Landress, glad that that was really fun for you, and uh, thanks everybody for keeping me company in the stream last night. I know, just uh, just as a warning here, that streams will be whenever they can happen, and however long they can happen, just for the foreseeable future. Now, I might be streaming tomorrow afternoon or something like that, or Monday afternoon, who knows, at this point kind of all bets are on well all bets are off and everything's on the table i guess i will try to let folks know when i can and give you give you a heads up or something like that say hey you know might be trying to do something this afternoon all right josh thank you so much for hanging out for a bit and again uh, everybody who's not already given josh that follow please give josh that follow now here i'm just going to again shove some of this in here i'll probably get the Prussian blue, that's it. And I, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be the Prussian blue of... Yeah, we're not going to go with the Williamsburg. Uh, just haven't had a chance to try that out yet. So we'll, we'll wait on that for just a bit here. All right, again, just shoving in some of this darker color. We'll wipe some of this away. We'll go back in with some uh, Prussian blue in some areas and then uh, all of the orangey stuff, right? Hey, AD, nice to see you back. Yeah, it, 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 the Instagrams, I, I don't really do anything on there except post my stuff. And I see Instagram stuff from people that I follow. Uh, nothing toxic, nothing weird or anything like that. Uh, obviously, you can imagine, there's a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff that I end up seeing there. A lot of 3D printed stuff. Just because, uh, well, you know, it's going to show you what you're interested in, right? So here we go. There's that nifty little pre-glaze there now on the back here. We, we're we just going to dive into a little bit of our Prussian blue. Maybe a little more. And I think I'll probably try and do this as, as dry as we can as well. Because it just makes it easier to be able to wipe this stuff away. Yeah, actually... Uh, so AD, when because they were so big, uh, and they just kind of hung out over the toe, it it sort of looked like when she was on the bed, uh, oh, it looked like the Lorax, right? Because he's the he's the yellow guy, the Lorax from from Whoville or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it. Kind of looked like the Lorax's feet there. So. Those, those, I just started calling those her Lorax socks. Now, any more blue up there? No, no. So here's our, our blue Coke. Why don't we just try wiping some of this away? And uh, well, at least, and again, uh, now everybody, Lethal Shadows Gaming. That figure that I just showed you, we painted that up on stream. That's that's not just a print from Lethal Shadows. That's actually one of their sculpts. And there's there's obviously going to be more to come. So now, uh, if you have 3D printing needs, if you don't have a printer, maybe you got a small printer, you don't have a big printer, you could say, hey, look, uh, I would like this large creature. I don't really want to buy a Mono X or a Saturn or a Jupiter or a whatever. So uh, maybe just hand hand that hand those off to them and have them do that for you. Uh, silly Ma, nice to see you back. Nice to see you back. So we're going to now get to the juicy part, right? The juicy part here, Fanchon Red, Brown Matter, Franchin Med, Franchin Med, wow, there's, there you go, 
We ain't tired at all. We're not the least bit tired because we just can't pronounce it Franchin Med. We're going to put our Franchin Med over here. <laughs> Maybe it's because uh, it's Fanchin Red and Brown Matter. See, it, the, you thought that was a... Uh, you thought that it was a faux pas, but it actually was intentional. It was deliberate, just like the dwarf said. It was deliberate. Now, what's also deliberate, starting to get some of our some of our reddish color out here. Not a radish. Uh, silly moss. Uh, uh, speaking of sleep, yeah. Um, didn't get any last night. Maybe two hours. That was about it. Uh, maybe a couple of hours the night before, pretty much none the night before that. So if uh, if we do a lot more uh, French and med pronunciations, now you know why. Now you know why. So, uh, you know, we might, uh, we might have, uh, well, we don't want to, <laughs> I was just about to say, uh, switch a few letters in Russian blue. And a you know, like with with a couple of O's added and stuff like that, but yeah, we we don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. What we do want to do, start to set up our all of our little glowy stuff, right? It seems so dark. Where the heck did the other guy go? There he is. And if you watch this stream, uh, what was this? Ah, I can't remember what that was that we painted, but anyways. It this becomes this. See, so that's how this started out. And of course, guess what? We're going to have lots of well here. We're actually going to have some not just cooler colors, but also some some more intense colors here. And we got the golds here, so it's not going to be as desaturated as this is here. And everybody, again, please check out Lethal Shadows Gaming. All right, we got our reds there. We got our reds here. Uh, trying to think maybe that blocks, so cast a shadow. Cast a shadow on there. Uh, do we? Uh, I'm going to pound a little bit more of that back here. So I was hoping to save this again for a, like a YouTube video, a public access one, because YouTube gets really cranky when you don't do public access videos. Uh, right now, Lethal Shadows, that, that's why I'm later, because I literally just got her to sleep at about 11.25 six or something like that i had to basically try and slide off of the bed i think it took me about three minutes just to try and slide off of the bed so that i didn't make any kind of a rustle or a racket or anything like that i mean when you think about it the beds that you're in over there they're kind of designed to be massively uncomfortable and after several days you finally maybe get some kind of uh, accustomedness to that and now you're back to something entirely different again so uh, there's just all kinds of things that point to it's not going to be easy right uh, it was a little bit like you're trying to just uh you know it's like one of the kids or something like that and you're trying to sneak off or whatever just as they've gone to sleep and you really don't want to wake them up uh, i did tell her that should you know she wake up and just not be able to get back to sleep i mean just like last night right she can join us in the chat so you can see this is starting to change and this is pretty much just the orange that's our homemade fluorescent orange backed up with just a little bit of our french and med because <laughs> and of course if i keep saying that over and over again you could be hearing that weeks from now so i probably shouldn't get in the habit of doing that might not be the best idea in the world. So you can see this is going to start climbing up here. And gosh, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, oh my gosh, object source lighting, you can't do that on a whole army. It takes too much time. I said, you want to take less time. How's about object source lighting everywhere? Everywhere, on everybody. Why not? Because dwarves, right? Object source lighting on everybody. Because... Essentially, I don't have to paint half the figure there. I don't have to paint this half. This half I have to paint normal. Here, this is the same as everything else, right? Doji, nice to see ya. Uh, so, oh, uh, Lethal Shadow's going to start carrying some dice soon. 
hopefully they will all be Lord of the Rings themed because you know <laughs> the Tolkien estate would never come after you. That, 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 why would they? <laughs> they would consider it charming and just uh, they would they wouldn't bat an eye. Well, hopefully you're gonna have yourself some really fun designs. Let's oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's get some of this orange down in here. Let's start getting a, maybe a little yellow into that orange here, and just gonna start to buy them. Oh, let's really power this inner. So now, wait a minute. Stupid microphone just got caught. So you can see we've got the Defense of the North fund. That uh, obviously, uh, as a Dark Danigan suggested last night, it's like, uh, well, the, the desk fund is over. <laughs> That, that can go away. Uh, if you want to have those Easterling miniatures for painting on stream and tutorial videos, why don't you do the same with the War of the North stuff? So if you're wondering what that's doing there, that's why it's there. But this right here, you think this is starting to get light and intense? Yeah, it's again, we're just getting started. And of course now, uh, this wasn't the green stuff world powder, but the marbler stuff that I got works just like this. So this linseed oil gets you that. All right, let, let's start to think about our freehand design here, right? So something along the lines of this. We'll obviously have to use that as our kind of a starting point here. You can see we've got the, the double line there and then the kind of runes inside. So we're going to try and do that here. Let's just grab ourselves... Uh, a brush and get going here. Little the brilliant yellow pay a little bit of the Indian yellow. Now so lethal shadow uh yeah the those color chart things I know I always keep yapping about those but boy they really do they just help so much because you get a chance to see that that interaction because, yeah, well, especially if you see the, the color theory in reds, well, guess what? There was a, oh, that's going to be too much paint on there. There was several colors there that I was a little bit surprised. I said, well, that's not quite what I was expecting. Uh, especially the, Gam no, the Richeson, what was that stuff? Uh, Naphthol Red. I keep thinking Naphthol Crimson, but I think Naphthol Red was the name of it. More here. Up there. And we will start off. Yeah, let's uh, dive into some of our fluorescent yellow, brilliant yellow pale. That's going to make it mighty, mighty opaque. And uh, Lethal Shadows. I think you'll hear me say many times in some videos, you can thin, it's one part of the Book of Wapple actually, you can thin the oil paints, you cannot dilute them because this is practically 96% thinner, and yet, ah, uh, look at that. That will cover almost as well, at least in this area here, it's going to cover almost at the same level as if that was right out of the, look at that. That's almost complete thinner right there. I mean, it is in, it is a massive amount of thinner in here. Why? Because I want that to actually sink down into the uh, crevices just a bit. Now we might do a little less. Are the orange in there? Get a bit of thinner. Start to lighten up the flames, and that's going to change all of this here. This is going to start to look a little bit more like fire. Ah, Wolfenstein. Uh, well, I know we've got some. Uh, we've got ourselves some emotes. I'm, I apologize that I haven't made any of the new emotes. I think I have th three to five new slots, but well. <laughs> uh, we just need five minutes where nothing absolutely insane is going on. Uh, no problem, Wolfenstein. Just, uh, just being here, keeping me company. That is much appreciated. And I've been telling a couple of folks that that they they say, "What if you didn't have to worry about deals to pay?" Whatever. I say, I'm, I'd be painting just as much as I was before. The the bonus would be I get to keep everything. A lot of other folks would be sad because they wouldn't be getting anything. 
but I would actually get to keep the figures for me, so yay me. Uh, I'm all in favor of that. Also in favor of now. Oh, look at this. See how that covers right there? I guarantee that was not going to cover. What are we at here? 51 minutes in, 20 minutes ago? This would have been troublesome. 20 minutes later, it's kind of just, yeah, whatever. It's not difficult at all. So timing matters. That's why we like to have, see, I can even do some dry brushy stuff over this. Timing is everything, not just in comedy, but in oil paintings. One of the ways to kind of help yourself with that timing, that would be to have multiple miniatures going on at the same time. Obviously, wasn't able to get that kind of stuff prepped, and we didn't have time to do one of those type of streams. Hi, Artem Michael, how you doing? Nice to see you, Artem Michael. Uh, I don't know if the temperatures have dropped uh, down there for you, because what did you say it was 95 in your room, but yet 58 degrees in your basement where the printer is? All right, I can see that's uh, already started to build up pretty quickly there, right? Uh, look, looks like we've got a, we got ourselves a duck. I can see a duck, and it looks like it almost looks like the duck has a uh, a bottle opener. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that's not a bottle opener, but that might kind of tell you where our our mind has wandered to. Now we're gonna start to bring some of the light up this way. But you must have dark to show light. I don't know how many times I've seen object source shading. Where people they say, what, the robe is white. And I say, yeah, that's great. The light that he's carrying is going to cast a shadow on his white robe. Which means then you get the dark on the robe. Which will make uh, your lighting actually stand out. And it doesn't matter what the color is, right? Here's Schmandoff, the much larger and tougher older brother of Gandalf. The contrast here, you have a high saturation blue. And then over here, you have really grayed down, kind of dirty, warm stuff, right? That That's your couple of forms of contrast on that. And I'm just, just trying to figure out, okay, we're, what's the extent of some of the firelight that we want to have here? Now, of course, the, the cloth is going to have some different lights on it, say, than, I don't know, the, the armor, right? Because they're two different surfaces, two very different surfaces here. Let's get a little bit of the fluorescent orange starting up in here. Not so much in the back of the robe. Uh, well, it kind of depends, kind of depends now of... Uh, obviously, Gandalf the White was allowed to show a little bit more of his uh, power. Gandalf the Grey kind of didn't have the the permits there to uh, make merry with his magic that he started to do a little bit more later on. And here, we're just going to start to... Look at this. He was just trying to plan out uh, see a little bit more of our... I'm just so we we need a little bit more back here, but all of those darks that we did that is what creates that extra bit of contrast. This, this is so so incredibly important. Oh, I'm gonna switch brushes here. Get a newer one of these. Uh, well, even that I can tell it's uh it's getting used up because that uh, marker is wiping away. Hey, one true cube. Nice to see you again. How you doing? I I hope that uh, your Saturday went well. Cause well now it's Sunday here, so obviously for all our European friends and our Aussie friends, it is it's been Sunday for a while. Uh, here I I I hope you can sort of see that this is not thinned down. It, it's not like what we did there in the little eye slots on these skellies here. Our little flamey skelly friends. Uh, so Wolfenstein, because of the the hours that I typically stream, we have uh, 
Oh gosh, what would you say? At least 60%, 65% of the off, uh, audience is from overseas. Safe to say. I know it works out that way with the Patreon page because uh, there's a lot of different uh, denominations, right? I'm seeing lots of different currencies that I've never seen before. Ah, uh, see, that's starting to look at that. That's, and that, this is not the lightest light either. Not the lightest light. So again, this was originally going to be a YouTube video, but uh, I figured we would start to maybe kick off our Defense of the North Fund uh, and the release of all the, the new Easterling stuff, which, well, uh, I might have been looking forward to for a while, right? Now, let me see if I can find some of my other Easterlings over here. Uh, now, of course, these go back long before we've added we've doubled the size of this i think since since uh this Where's, there we are yeah there's there's at least twice as much stuff as that now probably and i had a blast with these it's also one of my my army painting series there so there's our easterling army absolutely it is my favorite of all of the lord of the rings armies and it's always going to be i mean we paint tons of other lord of the Rings stuff we're basically going to have one of every army in Middle Earth. Uh, Abakar, how you doing? It's great to have you back. Great to have you back. Now again, this is nowhere near the lightest that we're going to do. We're just we're starting to figure out, okay, how much lighter do we want to go? Uh, on top of this, uh, once we let this set, I don't know, another half an hour-ish or whatever, we're going to start to go in with more of just the fluorescent orange on that ah uh, boy dark din again thanks for joining us and thanks for thanks for all the messages and everything so as you can see look it, it's there it's there and thank you so much i really appreciate that uh it does mean a lot because those things uh they they can sometimes just last minutes and then they never make them again and and you know what you know of which I speak, so I really appreciate that. Uh, let me see. And of course, we did a whole. Uh, well, we've got a whole dull Amroth army that we've been working on, and uh, I'm gonna try and get the what are they? The Medbury. I think it's the Medbury Dull Amroth guys. And we'll try and do this kind of freehand on our Medbury Dull Amroth. I, I do believe that there's enough openness in the horses bar to be able to do stuff like that. Now, thank you so much, Dirk Dan, again. Uh, oh, yep, yep. Here, let's get some more. Now, we've done... Well, we have ourselves a huge Rohan army, including all the nifty conversions that we did, right? We turned a regular horse guy into gambling, made the flag ourselves, different head, gave him the hair, put the cloak on him. And, uh, well, we've even made our own army of the dead here. Tomb King's bits, Fireforged horse, army of the dead, and lots of sculpting. So, yeah, Dark Dan again, it was... Uh, <laughs> It was just bizarre that that would be, on all of all days, that would be, well, all weeks, it would be this week, right? Of all the times. So, uh, again, that's why we've got the, so we can continue painting the newest Easterling releases. So we painted this one up on stream a week or two ago. And obviously we got this one going now. And, of course, we painted all of these on stream, the Dragon Acolytes. And we want to keep that going. Because, well, Easterlings, right? Uh, we also converted a Boromir. I don't know where he's at. I, I can't see him from here. But we did actually convert ourselves a Boromir figure uh, on horseback, of course. And oh, oh yeah, thanks, Dirk Dan, again. I <laughs> just got surprised there. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Now, of course, for whatever reason, this sound doesn't play, but this is the sound that's supposed to play. Thanks so much, Dark Dan, again.
And oh, look at that! Look, we got some green. It's in the. It's got. We got some green going there. Uh, RJ, that was. Uh, it's kind of funny when that first came out. I actually thought that it was. It was uh, Forge World. That it was resin. Little did I know that unlike the Am and Hand kit, it's super posable, right? I, I didn't know. Did not know. Uh, maybe at some point we, we try and get that. I don't know. You know it's, it's something that is, it's, could be made. So terrain that I can make is, is not going to be necessarily the, the focus of uh, what I would get. Uh, it would be nice to just have it, right? And so that we can just kind of put it together and it's done. That would be pretty sweet. What would be nice is a little bit more of our orange over there. So you know, we might, uh, I don't know how much more we can add here towards the light of side of this thing. Because we don't want to get too much paint built up on here. Ah, Gray Wolf. Gray Wolf, how the heck are you doing? Uh, sorry that uh, I didn't send you a message about the streaming here because uh, as of 11.24, I wasn't even sure if I might be able to do this. So, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's going to be topsy-turvy like that, like I was telling you. So otherwise, I would have sent you a message of some kind. Let's see if we can get... Ah, there we to get some lighter edges, like so. So yeah, RJ, the... I didn't also realize uh, until I saw, uh, gosh, it must have been Locky. Yeah, it must have been Locky's video or something like that. I didn't just realize how interchangeable it was, that it was more like the Rohan kits. Yeah, had I known that, it would have been nice to know that, but didn't. Uh, uh, actually, Grey Wolf, on a, in a complete side note, uh, have you been able to sort of, uh, shall we say, study up on song a little bit, and, and kind of be be preparing yourself for the for the next round so that you can wreak some vengeance there? Because I know we were talking about that. Now I don't know how many battle reports there are with, say, the the newest rules. Right, that that's going to be a little bit of a issue. Is finding things to watch with all the latest stuff. Uh, so, uh, oh, thanks, Wolfenstein. I'll uh, try and hit you once the stream is over. I'm sure it'll. Oh, actually, it hasn't shown up on my on my Twitch thing yet. Unless it was a Facebook thing, in which, well, in which case I'll see that after the stream too. What I'd like to see here is a little bit more of it. Oh, that was that was getting too light here. See that? That's just getting too light. So we'll take away a little smidge there. Yeah, I'll make that a bit more towards the orange here. I think. Ah, well, Grey Wolf, you, well, you certainly know a heck of a lot more than I do about song. Uh, I know, well, I know nothing. I know absolutely nothing. Uh, I, I'm sure they made changes to the scenarios, too. Uh, I don't know if they've added any or just changed the ones that exist. And again, Dark Dan, again, thank you so much for getting the ball rolling on our Defense of the North Fund. So we we got we got ourselves some green there. Thank you so much. Now here, oh look at that! See, change that. It, that had a little too much yellow in there. But we needed what is it? Well, basically, oh look, we're an hour in. By the way, yeah, this is one hour in. That's it. Just one hour in. Want to keep going here with our oranges? Look that nice and orangey there. Well, back over here to the, again, this is the homemade fluorescent orange. Look at that. We're going to get some of that going here. Now, back in the before times, I used to use the, the cadmium colors, like cadmium scarlet, even cadmium orange. I mean, there's nothing wrong with those colors. They're just fine. 
awful expensive though and and they will take a whole lot longer to dry than that's just it's the nature of the beast when you've got cadmium colors they will just take longer to dry Let's see if i can get a little orange onto the gemstones if you can get a little orange onto his helmet that was getting a little too thick send it down here Uh, so uh, Grey Wolf with Lannisters, it's almost a dry, well, at least this is the, the few times I got to play them. It's just literally drive your opponent insane. Uh, I just called it the Army of Noob. You can't do that. Uh, nope, you're not doing that. Oh, you wanted to do that? Noob, you're not doing that either. Uh, Wolfenstein, my, my favorite army is my friend. I can go through here. Boy, it's been a long, long, long time since we last showed our bolt action armies here. Uh, so the, this section, we did a whole series of tutorials on our winter winter Soviets. There's our winter Americans that we did. Uh, this was my one, uh, one of my two bolt action tournament armies. That was my uh, Folsom Jaegers uh, Monte Casino. And here's uh, some early war Germans, and here's uh, we got some early war desert action there, some some winter Germans. And these are some scenes here from a few of my battle reports. That was my alternate Battle of Arras episode. Uh, this was the Bridge to Nuvion. That's another battle report. See those uh, vehicles there, those that ruined Panzer II? I actually sculpted that, and then I actually have a video on the YouTube channel showing how it's painted. And here you go. There's my favorite army. There's my French, my early war French. Now, of course, I did enjoy the, the Folschemagers here. There's the Monte Cassino army, and there is the display board, which, of course, as always, was made as terrain piece. So it was intended to be played on as well as, well, be a board that can carry the stuff around. Getting back into our orange here again. Back into the orange. And it's just amazing. That would not, that one area right there, it is not going to stick there. If it, if it didn't give that paint just a little time to set. Now, of course, we have other armies underway. We've got, uh, let's see, well, our uh, French Resistance. We've got our Charlemagne Division. I also have a, well, I painted a Finnish army, because, of course, and we got Sarge, Sarge doing the 15-hour day thing, Sarge on the big 15-hour day, thank you so much, Sarge, for the Shamrock Shake, we could certainly use one of them, ah, there we go, and Wolfenstein showing a little bit of that shy town love, so Sarge, how the heck are you doing, uh, Lurking while working, I assume. Because, uh, you know, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. And uh, we're, we're getting the, the Easterlings kicked off here. Again, uh, really, really looking forward to that uh, that Dragon Emperor. I, I think that could be at least a three-part series. It could be a four-part series. Just just depending on how complex it is. Uh, I know there's, what, there's six guys that are carrying that palanquin. And then, of course, the the black dragons, those would be for painting up on stream. Just like you know, all of the, these two heroes, right? And, of course, all of the dragon acolytes, of which we've done four of these on stream. All right, Wolfenstein, thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate it. And thanks for the follow, of course. Appreciate that, too. Oh, let's get a little bit more of an orange in there. Yeah, let's do that, too. So, Sarge, I hope that the the 15-hour day just has... I'm, well, it's a grind. <laughs> There's no way that it's not. But as uh, it uh, hopefully starts to draw, draw to that inevitable conclusion... You'll be able to enjoy some chow. Oh, you're home. And oh, wow. Oh, Sarge. That's, uh, you always have some fantastic food choices for when you get home to the casa there. 
Always some really good food choices. Now, do you have more of those 15-hour days on the horizon, or is that was that just kind of a one-off, and hopefully you get to the, the normal crazy 12-hour days? All right, so we've got our orange in there. Now I'm going to start to see if I can't get even a few lighter areas on the armor here. Now I've got to make sure, <clears throat> sorry, that I keep that I keep that uh, fluorescent yellow in there. Because if I don't, if I just add brilliant yellow pale to this, it's going to get awful. Just it's going to be like a weird pale yellow. So just like when we do the metallics. Right, as soon as you start adding white to your metallic oils, you just kind of blew up the whole metallic effect. Ah, so, so ran out of parts. Uh, boy, Sarge, uh, <laughs> is there any way you can make sure it, it keeps running out of parts? Wow, you know, this has happened three weeks in a row. Why has this happened three weeks in a row? I have no idea why. Boy, it's it's a mystery. That's a total mystery where we keep running out of parts. But given the way things are today, Sarge, I mean, of course, is that really a surprise, given how things are going? And uh, probably will for, I don't know, pretty much for the foreseeable future. Oh, you know what we haven't done here? We need a, a little bit more light down here. But guess what? I do need a little bit of the opaque a little bit of that opacity uh, down here too. Right over here uh, on, his, on the leg. Blammo. Now, of course, this is the, the Super War Priest. And these came out, I want to say, about a month and a half ago. Could have been a couple of months ago, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but really, really looking forward to the, or excited about the new stuff. Uh, I know that they've got the bears, what, the Bjornlings or whatever. Uh, I don't think I'll be getting those because I already have so many of those from other uh, digital sculptors. I don't think I need that. Some of the Dale stuff, possibly, uh, more, more just for videos than anything else. Not necessarily, I, well, obviously, uh, we're going to need Dale stuff, right? Because if we're going to be doing our, our appropriate story stuff with like Easterlings versus Erebor and and uh, Dale and everything else, well, we're going to need to make an army of Dale. No, well, Sarge, it just, it's nice to have you here. We we've got Kathy back to the house. Uh, there's there's a bit of a transition to all that, and we've kind of discussed that. I think I'm gonna chalk a, a little bit of my lighter yellow over here, gonna brighten up that firelight a bit more. I mean, it is kind of a magic firelight, as we would we would say. Maybe a little bit more intense than, uh, you know, there's usually not lots of flaming skulls laying around. So uh, we're going to consider it more of a magical type of a thing. Ah, green leaf. Nice to see it. We had green fairy studios in here. Now we've got green leaf terrain in here. So green leaf, I hope that your Saturday was good. So yeah, there was... Uh, there's a, a few little rough transition points there. Hopefully tomorrow is kind of the start to getting the mindset to back to being here. And obviously, you know, if she could just be streaming again and, and doing all her normal hangout things in Discord, that that's going to set things more at ease too, aren't, wouldn't it? Now, how much lighter do I want to go with these? Uh, one of the reasons, like we said, we're making these lighter here. They're metal, so they would glint a little bit more. The cloak over here, I may just leave it there, not take it any lighter than that. I'll leave that be where it is. I'll lighten this up a bit more. Here, because all this stuff, 
Well, that is metal. And the shoes, not so much. This thing here, the only reason that's getting lighter is because it's, uh, it's getting darn close to being in the flames itself. All right, we're going to go back to our pin line wash thing, and we're going to hit this again. One more time. Ah, uh, see, that's just to brighten that up. They're metal, so they would glint a little bit more. The cloak over here, I may just leave it there, not take it any lighter than that. I'll leave that be where it is. I'll lighten this up a bit more. Here, because all this stuff, well, that is metal. And the shoes, not so much. This thing here, the only reason that's getting lighter is because it's a... Uh, it's getting darn close to being in the flames itself. All right, we're going to go back to our pin line wash thing, and we're going to hit this again. One more time. Ah, see, that's just to brighten that up. And we'll uh, maybe use that same little bit here on our gemstones we're gonna say thank you so much to monster bucket wow look at that monster bucket that is 19 months worth monster bucket it's been a while uh, how the heck have you been doing on oh, sumikiro how are you doing ah there we go uh, so sumikiro it's nice to see you again too nice to see you uh, monster bucket gee whiz it has been a while I hope that uh, you know your your schedule hasn't been too nuts for you. Hopefully not too crazy. All right, so I'll pop a little bit of that lighter color down here. I might mm, no, I'm gonna wait. Don't have to make that choice right now for sure. Yeah, so Sumikuro, it's it's oh. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Grey Wolf Studio. Thank you so much. Boy, Grey Wolf Studio, I wish this would play because guess what? And we'll do it for you. We'll just do it manually. And I think that is. Thank you so much, Grey Wolf Studio. And where is he? He says, uh, he says oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So it says for Gondor, yet uh, you guys get this? It's like, dude, you got that ring. It's like, I had a ring. Don't have it anymore. Thanks so much, Alex. And of course, poor Alex just says, uh, what? Seriously? Man, that guy's just nuts. He comes up to me, says, here, take this ring and hide it. It's like, do I have pockets? No, I don't. So uh, I ate it, and that kind of made a problem. Thank you so much for that, uh, Green Wolf Studio. I appreciate it. So we got ourselves, we got ourselves green. We're going green. We always said we were the greenest uh, painters because, well, we threw nothing away. And by nothing, I mean we threw nothing away. Which is why half the time we, it looks like we're just using junk. I don't know, possibly because that's all we're using. <laughs> it's just uh, recycled junk. So thank you so much, Grey Wolf Studio. Man, you know that's going to help a bunch. Because I'm looking forward to the Black Dragons. Uh, do I do, do I just keep going with my same Black Dragon color scheme? Or do we maybe do something a little bit different? I don't know. I, I think we'll probably stick with our same Black Dragon color scheme. All right, so, oh, look at that. Look at that. See, that gets nice and spicy. Guess what? Haven't done our lightest color yet. So, uh, Grey Wolf, uh, let me, oh, I think you saw. Here he is. So, this was a little TMM right here, but a little bit of freehand there as well. So, this is our latest army painting series. So, doing some Lannisters there. Uh, Grey Wolf, I've got some Night's Watch that are actually already prepped. Uh, I think you saw the Night's Watch Cavalry unit, didn't you? Uh, I don't have that here anymore because I actually gave that as a present to somebody at Adepticon. 
Uh, but I do have a couple of Night's Watch infantry units. And of course, uh, we'll, we'll get into the crushed glass snow on those guys, of course, right? We'll get into that. So we're going to start to get some some more lights here in our gold. Let's uh, see if we can start doing a little, little bit of freehand here. And of course... I think we'll do our sneaky snakes on here too. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do those little snakes there. Let me see if I can put this over here and then maybe you can at least have a little bit of it there. So thanks so much for, for the contributions to the fun because I just think that something as weird and as complex as that Dragon Emperor palanquin thing uh, could make an interesting set of videos. Now we're going to do this around the outer edge of our freehand design. And again, I don't mind if the blue mixes into it, darkens it, changes it like over here, right? Because it's it's down in this crevice here. How would it not change, be darker, pick up some of the blue? Now that does mean though, I got to go back over there and I've got to get some new some new yellow. See, as soon as that blue starts to work its way in there, I see that. Come back over here, get some of the yellow. Work that in like so. And then we're just going to have to let that set there. All right, we'll come back later and mess around with that. Now what we're going to do next is a little snakes here. If we can do those. Or serpents, I guess. All right, Sarge. Uh, well, we we should probably still be here when you get back. You know, Dark Den again. I actually haven't looked at that. Uh, I'm mean, obviously they posted the pictures of it. I haven't looked at those in weeks. In fact, I don't even know if I ever looked at the pictures that closely. Uh, so I, I'm gonna check it out and just kind of try to read the tea leaves, right, to see just how ooh, how many pieces, or, you know, will we have to paint it? Can we paint it all together? Do we paint the six guys and the palanquin not on there? Do we paint the six guys individually? That has yet to be determined. All right, there's the first sneaky snake. Let me see what we can do here. We get that second one just started. Obviously, the, the cloak itself is going to distort that a bit because it, it's flowing, right? Uh, I, oh, gosh, I agree with It's been so long since I've since I prepped those Night's Watch units. I couldn't tell you what they were. Well, they're from the the starter Night's Watch box. That I can tell you. Um, so that, here's the fun thing about the oils, right? I'm just going to take this. I said that went entirely in the wrong direction. Oh, look, it's gone. <laughs> I was like, what? Why was I going in that direction with the freehand when it needs to actually go this way? So, flexibility oils. Yes, and uh, it's not it's not unusual for that to happen several times. I'll show you it again. It was another series of videos that I did. Oh, where the heck are you? Why are you always in the hardest to reach places? So this uh, diorama here. This is what a three-part. Yeah, this is a three-part series. But this particular area on our leopard here. Four times I wiped that stuff away and and went again to like the pattern pattern was the way that I liked it so yeah the fun waterfall scene right here yeah gray wolf uh, it's got to be the sworn sworn brothers uh because it was in that that initial box set what the the one that's about eighty five or so well used to be eighty five eighty nine I don't know what they are now I'm sure they're probably more than that. But yeah, that was, you know what, we could almost make these more like a, more dragon-like here. 
but now we uh, might just leave those as is and well now we can come back over here we can start to think about some lighter colors in there also guess what might throw some green in here too just to again not only a whole series of just yellow so there's actually some green that goes in there and we're going to throw some of that over here too So yeah, geez, Dirk Dennigan, I'm going to have to go back and actually check those pictures out of that thing. So the crushed glass mentioned by Grey Wolf, Armored Wolf. Look at that fantastic crushed glass snow. And the trees, and this uh, you can watch it. Uh, one of my latest videos on the YouTube channel shows how I did the crushed glass. Now, here's another example of the crushed glass on this lethal studio, lethal shadow. Uh, right here, look at that. There's your crushed glass snow again. I just put that on there earlier today. Look at, see all the glintiness to that. Now, I've got several videos on the YouTube channel of guess what? Night's Watch stuff. Oh, uh, Hey, Grey Wolf, have you ever seen the videos that I did on the wolves and on the three folk giants and then on the, I did a scorpion and what the heck was the other one? Because there, the, there was the bolt thrower and there was the catapult. I did videos on each of those and I'm pretty sure there's a snow video on those. I think, and so again, everybody, Lethal Shadows Gaming, that, that's a printing service. They also sculpt, uh, they have some sculpts in their miniature line, which uh, you just happened to see just now. All right, here's some uh, radiant green here. Radiant green, why? Because we want to reflect this stuff. And look at this. Uh, turn on, bam, our gold actually has some green down here. Yes, it does. And yeah, we can still take our blending brush, do all kinds of neat stuff with that. Uh, so Grey Wolf, I, I, I think it'll be kind of interesting. I would say you, you'll see a lot of Van Dyke Brown and Indigo, and then a whole bunch of Radiance just essentially glazed over the top. That's uh, if I had to just kind of predict what you would see, that would be it. Now, of course, I'm just going to wait till things well, <laughs> saying get back to normal. That's uh, that's an oxymoron right there. But when we do get a chance to do one of our uh, normal sessions, I think we'll uh, we'll try and do a basically a unit painting version of one of those because that could be interesting for sure. No doubt about it. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try this. So this uh, red right here—that's actually the naphthol red, uh, just kind of based on the recent well the most recent uh color theory and oils tutorial that i did for the patreon page why do i want to have this red there because guess what can be reflected on this yes we're going to reflect the red onto the goal because how the heck i've seen this so many times seriously i've seen something like this red right next to gold and yet there is zero reflection and it doesn't have to be only for for non-metallics because true metallic metals are, are just no different um oh that's not the right one and here's this one here uh, yeah so you can see the red reflected on the helmet this is all tmm here that's all tmm but yet it still has uh, reflections on it Well, let's uh, here bring in a little bit more of the red in here, and now this is where we've got to have it. Right in there. See what we just did? Not only does it, does it add a bit of dark in there that we needed, but look, see this red is now reflected over here. Just like the blue is reflect. That's why our golds have almost no yellow in them. There's almost no yellow in any of our golds.
All right, well, Grey Wolf, well, thanks on so many levels. I mean, thank you so much for the contribution. Thank, thanks for obviously keeping keeping me company there over the, the course of a very, very crazy week. I know that was a whole lot of extra time that you spent doing that. So that is, uh, well, that you know, that was, a, that was key. That was pretty darn crucial in keeping us going. So that is also appreciated. I can actually now thank you by, by voice, right? So yes, uh, uh, that is very much appreciated. Uh, we ha I had been preparing for it. Believe me, it wasn't like we didn't know it was coming. I, th I thought we had everything all pretty much set. And then, uh, then all of a sudden, wee bit of a hiccup there. You know, I'm going to throw a little bit more of that again. That is the Naphthol Red. I keep wanting to call it Naphthol Crimson, and that is from Richeson. But, oh, look at that. Now, now, let's, let's see about some of our lightest highlights here with uh, our gold. Because while we have all our firelight stuff, we also want to have... Here, let me get some more thinner in this. Again, you can see I'm just going to throw a drop onto the white there. That's it. Just a drop. No more. I'll let that get thinned out a bit. All right. Well, thank you so much, Grey Wolf. You have a good one. And, uh, well, hopefully we'll... I, I might be streaming tomorrow. Just to, I think I might have said that, and you might have heard that, but could be streaming tomorrow. We also want to welcome in Lamanas. Lamanas, also, thank you so much again for... For all the messages, keeping me company there when when things were were very interesting to say the least. So many thanks to you. So Lamanas, uh, yeah, weren't entirely sure if it was a going to happen to start with, and then we thought it was going to be a very long drawn out process. And then it turned into, here's a batch of papers, leave. It's like, uh, oh, oh, okay, all right. It, uh, so it, lots of interesting twists and turns, that's for sure. So, uh, Lamaness, I hope that you had yourself a, at least a decent day, a fun day maybe, because fun day is nice. And maybe maybe folks got something planned that's fun for Sunday. Like now, of course, uh, I, this is my to me. This basically feels like two Thursdays in a row, because this is our normal Thursday stream time. So it's kind of deja vu all over again. Yes, it's a bit of deja vu all over again. So yeah, it's. Uh, I think this one, believe it or not, this one actually started at the normal Thursday stream time of about 11:35. It might have been a minute or two later, but it was pretty darn close to being at our normal Thursday start time. And of course, <laughs> Friday's Thursday stream, that one got started a little later than it was supposed to. That was more like a midnight or so. All right, you can see bands of light and dark there. We're going to go more into it here. Uh, hey, uh, Dano, uh, I'll post your link to your to your newest stuff. Well, and all your older stuff, too. But, uh, yeah, Lamines, you got to see some of the bases that uh, Dano has been creating there. Uh, I, I really like those. Uh, Right now, 3D printing just ain't going to happen here, uh, at least not this week. Otherwise, we'd be printing out those fantastic bases by Dano, and we would be certainly painting them up on stream or in videos, no doubt. Ah, Bithron and Acid Burn Punk. So, Bithron, I'm glad that you got a chance to play. Uh, it sounded like you sounded like you really enjoyed the heck out of it, too, which uh, that's kind of nice. I'm really glad. I know you've been just really, really, really wanting some fun like that for quite a while. Uh, yeah, acid burn. She. It, it's kind of now begins the the adjustment of being here, and and trying to to get things back, 
uh, physically and everywhere, every other way too. Uh, so here we're going to come back in. Uh, we actually might need to add some more dark up here. That's probably going to be Egyptian violet up there, I would say. Uh, so Bithron, glad that you, glad that you could have yourself some fun. A little more light into there. Yeah, Bithron, uh, was it what you were kind of expecting as far as how things played out? Uh, you know, just how the, the rules are, the mechanics of it? Or were there just a couple of things that said, okay, I know this now. I will make this adjustment next time. So again, the Cults 3D, uh, check out uh, Dano's newest stuff there. Well, and again, the, the older stuff too. It's not just about the, only the new stuff. So you can see how those goals just start to pick up more and more and more shape. Uh, it, it's important to have a, a reference, right? Where, where have we been with this? Okay, how much lighter does this have to be? Uh, whereas we've got the, the metal highlights up here. So we need to kind of balance those together. And the only way you can do that is if you're, you're doing both at once. Uh, I know it's real popular to just like paint the head. Everything else is black and all you do is paint the helmet. Uh, again, compared next to black, everything looks light. Then you start painting other colors around it, especially if they are lighter colors, you're going to go, oh my gosh, that is nowhere near light enough. I thought it was too light. So that that's just another practical reason why I always advocate working on the whole miniature at once. Yeah, Bithron, when, when it's just, you know, two or better, right and all you can do is not roll the two uh, theory hammer goes out the window and stuff that should work ends up not working yes indeed now now you, there is uh, i have at least one maybe two blog posts of the only flames of war game that i ever got to play well actually technically i got to play about a game and a half of flames of war then the it immediately went to bolt action after that, so never... Well, you had a bit of a schism in the uh, Flames of War when they came out with 2nd Edition. So that... The, the place where I was playing it, all of a sudden people stopped. Uh, well, Bitra, I'm glad that you could pick it up. Well, you've kind of been doing the research, too. You know, you've seen some of those those same battle reports you and I were talking about last night. All right, now we'll get back over to here, and we're going to start not just doing these lighter things. We're going to start getting in some darks. And I'm going to say Egyptian Violet. Thank you very much. Maybe even some Van Dyke Brown, I guess. Let's get some really hefty darks in here. Oh yeah, no, that's right. Sorry, Bithron 4th edition. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, it, that, oh yeah, Bithron Team Yankee 2nd edition. That's, that's what it was. So it was 4th edition for flames that kind of... Uh, caused some angst and it was second edition for Team Yankee I think. Now I really gotta sharpen some things up here. Just uh, some of the edges got a little dull. Uh, it's metal, right? We need to have very sharp edges on our metal otherwise it ain't gonna look like metal. Alright so we've got you can see there's a little bit of roughness there. Wow, blending brush. Well, that's taken care of. That's all gone. I was about a paper towel here. And this is, most of the time, when I'm cleaning my brush, this is what we're talking about. Not a whole bunch of liquid, just literally a paper towel, and that's it. Uh, yeah, so I don't like we're talking uh, Bithron. The, a lot of folks 
they love Team Yankee, but they play it in, I don't know, 6 millimeter or something like that. They play it in a much smaller size, and, and they're, they're big fans of it in that scale. What's happening here? Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of... Yeah, we're just... It's, this is more about brush stroke management than uh, mixing colors, so to speak. I mean, you can do that with the oils. They're really good at that. Now, let's get some uh, heftier darks in here. Like there, and we're going to kind of do that towards the top. The idea, again, is to sharpen up that edge. So here we go. Now that, see, sharper edge, more like metal, right? Uh, Bithron, I feel, you know, of course, uh, space can be limited sometimes, but, you know, Team Yankee, maybe on a... Well, let's see, six by four. I don't know, maybe you go something like an, an eight by five and a half or something. Who knows, maybe all of a sudden those those distances start to make a little bit more sense, those ranges. Things are spread out a little bit more. All right, here we get some more of our dark in here. You must have dark to show the light. And I think we'll try and get some of our runes on there. I know we need to get, uh, start working on our little Eye of Sauron symbol there. I'm just going to get the dark in that as well. Poof, there it is. That's better. So we've gotten our dark up there. What about these guys? It's a lot of interesting little twists and turns. And and the metal shapes here. Ah, oh, thanks, Bithron. This is it's not the newest Easterling figures, not the ones that were released today, but oh gosh, I wanna say a month and a half ago maybe is when these guys released, possibly two months ago. If it's been two months, wow, talk about lost time. Holy smokes. And just adding to the Easterling army, we've I think there's still one of the acolytes yet to paint. Still got one more dragon acolyte yet to do. Alrighty, I'm gonna take something a little different here. I'm gonna throw some Terra Rosa into the the oils make stupid things like these banner poles and lances and everything and just make short work of them, I'll tell you. Makes absolutely short work of them. Now, we wanted to darken this because, well, shadows, right? See, that looks lighter because we just made that darker. All right, Sarge, uh, thanks again. Thank you so much. Appreciate the shamrock shake, too. You know that. You know that. Now I might, uh, let me see what we got here. Let's see, what do we have for orange here? Maybe a little bit of a fanchion red there, like so. And I might transition this a bit more here. Do I need it to go any lighter back there? Uh, I'll just wait. Uh, no need to push that right away. Also have to figure out this point here, because you got the light coming this way, but you also got the light coming this way on this leaf armor. First, I'm going to maybe just tighten up some edges, I think, if we can. Yeah, let's do that over here. I might once again, tighten up that edge just a smidge. Same over here. This one too. That, ah, there we go. There, now that uh, that makes a little more sense. I'd darken that up. And I might do a bit of pin line wall just to get some dark in there. That's all good there. This also needs a bit of our 
dark. Again, that's a, a combo of the, the Van Dyke brown, the Egyptian violet, possibly even a little bit of Fanchon in there too, I guess. The red. Let's see what happens when we just take some of our this Fanchon red, which, what do we call it at the start of the stream? Oh, Franchin Med? Yeah, that's... That, uh, that indicates we're not the least bit tired when we call Fanchin Red, Franchin Med. And thanks so much, Herbert Wolf, for posting the link to the Patreon page. I've got another new video that... Uh, well, let's just say I haven't been able to film it all at once like I normally would. So we took advantage of that and we said, well, it's probably going to dry anyways. So since the figure is dry, we're going to be doing some, some foliage and flock on the basing using the Armored Wolf grass tufts. And everybody, please check out Armored Wolf's uh, Etsy page. Check out his uh, fa uh, Instagram as well for all the, the fantastic dice bags. But the crushed glass snow, the grass and flower tufts, very superior products. Pretty much can't stand using any other grass tufts or flower tufts. Once you go armored wolf, you're never going back. Now I would again like to put some additional the the runes that I would normally put down here. I think those will go up here, which means we can't go too crazy with the lighter reds. Now also. Again, we're reflecting the red, aren't we? Onto this gold, we need to reflect a little bit of that red over here, too. Ah, a little more. Kind of lost sight of that a little bit. There you go. A hey, Thranual. So, Thranual, uh, yeah, the streams are going to be at weird times because I only actually started this not even two hours ago. Thranual, less than two hours ago, we started this here. Uh, and just be prepared for streams that are going to start at random times, unfortunately. And there might be, uh, who knows, we might even stream during the day. So as I was saying to everybody else, just kind of be ready because uh, all of a sudden we might just be like, oh, look, here, we're streaming now. I, I think no, I gotta get a little more Indian. Whoa, that's a little more Indian yellow that we wanted, but whole idea is to keep that from becoming too magenta, too much pink. So Thranual, nice to see you. Hopefully you've uh, had some more success with the painting as well. And we're gonna again that. I'm almost looking intentionally making that a bit of a cooler red. Why? So these reds just get that much warmer, that much juicier. Little bit, uh, yeah. Well, we're gonna probably lighten that top up uh, even more. But reds, for whatever reason, they can be a little bit tricksy. Uh, as you start to get more and more of the red on there, it's just it's more and more difficult to get more red on top of that. So that's why we don't want to do too much stuff here, because I would like to see can I maybe get a little bit of the freehand on there that normally would go onto the cloak. See if we can do that up here. Uh, thank you so much, Thranual. Appreciate that. We we we've got her back in the house here. And now begins the that kind of a recovery process, which could take a while. I mean, maybe things just kind of a snap back quicker than we expect. That would not be terrible, right? That would be very cool. Now, I could have had the ooh, Radiant Magenta here, because I think in uh, some of the other ones, like the Dragon Acolytes, we probably had the Radiant Magenta out there. I'm just going to use brilliant yellow pale mixed with a little bit of the Indian yellow just to make sure it doesn't get too much of a rosy color. So yeah, Thranual, that, that just woke up grogginess, man. 
it can get you. I've, I've been telling the story of, gosh, was this Wednesday? It, it might have been, no, this was Tuesday night, I think. No, I think it was Wednesday where I somehow dozed off. Not, not like laying down, but just partially laying down. I It was, <laughs> I looked at my phone and saw it was 1223 or something like that. And I went, wow, I'm three and a half hours late for getting over there. So I, I just start running around trying to get the bag packed and everything. And I wonder, wow, it's awful dark for a little afternoon. Yeah, it was, it was after midnight. And and I was I was all set to be charging out the door when it was after midnight, a little bit past visiting hours, just a bit, just a bit. All right, here, let's go with a little more brilliant yellow pale here, just to find the uh, the bright spots, so to speak, in our reds there. Also here, and now we're gonna have to let that set before we try and do any little free handy things on there. That's fine, because guess what? Got other things that we can do. You know, I'm just going to get all that out of there. Just get that stuff out of here. Let's get this going again. Fluorescent yellow. Now I'm just going to go more brilliant yellow pale with this, and then we'll we'll put the Indian yellow over the top of it. Just I'm just looking at my my other war priest there as a bit of a reference. Where's my, there's my brilliant yellow pail again. Then we'll have to make our serpents maybe look a little bit more dragony because, well, dragon emperor, right? And of course, uh, we are celebrating, uh, obviously, here, a strong attachment to the Easterlings, but the the brand new release for for the Middle Earth strategy battle game. That's it's called Defense of the North. And it's obviously well for me the focus is Easterlings. You've got stuff for Dale. There's the Windless. You've got uh, I think a couple of other care like a a banner bear type of thing, and you've got some uh, Bjorn and also bear form. And that that's not, uh, he doesn't have clothes, but he's not that bare. Well, we'll, we'll put it that way. He, he doesn't have clothes on, but he's also not bare. Well, I guess a bear can be bare because our polar bears were very bare. Those uh, 3D printed ones that we did from Archvillain. Oh, thank you so much, Dirk Dan, again. I appreciate that. Ooh, there we are. Yes. And, of course, thank you so much for, for the opening salvo in the Defense of the North Fund. Appreciate that. Because I think I've got a couple of the drag, the old, well, old. <laughs> wow, it's weird to be thinking of them as old. But I've got a couple more of the dragon acolytes that we can do. And then hopefully we can generate some more, some more new figs to paint on stream. And somehow I don't even know how it occurred to me. So glad I didn't actually start painting this yet. But this Easterling building that we did on stream again, you can go watch the stream again. Those those areas where you got the diamonds on top of the wall. Now that I have 3D printed torches, I'm gonna be actually I'm gonna be probably putting other torches there. So yeah, my Easterling buildings, you're gonna see a whole bunch of torches on them. Because, uh, and it's not make it epic basing, it is Pelinor, ironically enough. Here, so again, I'm going to try and make this up ahead on this a little bit bigger so that we can maybe do a bit more of a, a dragon type of a thing on it here. Uh, yeah, let's do a little bit more of our orangey red here now i have to almost stipple this because it, well, obviously it's going to keep turning blue as the prussian blue mixed in there well more of a greenish color stippling is fine because well you know 
there would be scales. Now, now we gotta go back the other way here. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go darker still. I am gonna go with a uh, Terra Rosa. How's about a little more? That's a bit, it's it's kind of opaque. So let's see what we get here. Let's see what we get in the shadow. That uh, maybe more. I don't know. That would be Egyptian Violet getting mixed into there. Yeah, where's their uh? Uh, boy, acid burn. I think ah, you must. I know you saw some of the arch villain, uh, the wintry type stuff, right? Uh, but well, of course. Oh, I've got to print up. Uh, we loved Wally the Walrus. He was the master sommelier with this scale ale. And of course, well, there was our Etten. That was the one we did on a Saturday stream. And there, look at that. We did a whole bunch of the polar bear warriors, and. Uh, you know, that's that, uh, of course, maybe in a past life might have been my stage name of Bear Necessities or something like that. But that was our Polar Bears from Arch Villain. Now, see, look at that. We're getting some, not just darks in here, but some warmer darks. And then we'll come back with our lighter colors. So, Lamines. Uh, interestingly enough, the best ones to start with are these color theory videos because it's not as much about painting a miniature, it's just doing this. Seeing how the colors react into other colors, seeing which ones are staining, which ones are not. And what's weird is that this is the newest video. Guess what the first one was? The, uh, the color theory videos, it was about red. And I knew that it had been a while, so I wanted to, and we've got different reds than I had in those early days. What I didn't realize is that the very first video of 16 color theory videos was about painting reds. So it was kind of entertaining to see that, to say the least. Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously uh, you aren't always... Uh, a miniature painter sometimes uh, career paths take you in different directions and and of course uh, when one is in the performing industry right you uh, sometimes you have to create new personas and now it's uh, again he said it's going to take that off of the blue not going to really change the value it just changed the color ever so slightly Ah, so acid burn, able to be impervious to the rigors of the cold weather. There are folks that just, they they don't deal with the cold. I can, it's, it's weird, I can deal with the cold outside very well. Cold inside, not so much. I guess I kind of obviously outside I'm just moving around a lot and everything else, but yeah, not a big fan of the super heavy air conditioning. I don't want it to be 80 degrees in the house either, but... Alright, I th think well, we're starting to get that set, and we maybe can start to add some, some values here. And uh, so there's others. Oh my god, let me see if I can. They might be in a weird position here. Ah, okay, here we go. So, so like this, we uh, this is a color theory video here that ended up also as a flesh tone. So it was a color theory, but we've we've done different skin tones as part of. It. We've done the the light skin tones. We've done oh look at this, looky here. This was one on the green skin tones, followed by, oh gosh, where is the miniature for that? Don't know where that one went, but we also did a miniature with this one too. Ah, there she is. Yeah. So this was the, the miniature that went along with that, that color theory video. So I, I try to include, I know this one, the latest one had a couple of Lannister figures because, well, reds, right? <laughs> So the Lannister miniatures were just uh, naturals for that. Mm 
May acid burn actually, uh, if a room gets a little too stuffy for me, it, it can be a challenge. All right, so there's our darks. Let's start to get some, some light into this, I think. And here again, there's our, there's our example. And we're going to start to work towards that now. Again, we'll take really yellow pale. In, uh, Indian yellow here. Again, we're looking to do some lights. And this, I might have to make this thicker. I don't know. We'll see how this covers. So do we need to thin it down a little bit more or not? You can always start out. And if you just kind of get the sense, ah, that's not really going to stick on there. Well, then you just uh, you can either add a little bit more thinner or get a bit more paint on the brush. So, yeah, we're, we're getting decent adhesion out of that. So that's the, the place that I would start because the color theory videos, they they, they just give you a chance to see what, what the paints are like before you've ever even put them on a miniature. But what I've tried to do on, on some of those color theory ones is to also have a painting of a miniature as part of it. Uh, and also to others, the, oh, it's the scale 75 paints. That's right. We sort of turn that into a color theory video. And then after that lamines, you, uh, you might even want to see the video where we're thinning down the oils. Uh, basically, I'm kind of making my own oil brushes out of them. I don't do that myself anymore because, well, I've been working with the oils a long time, and I don't have time to do that anymore. There's just no time to be mixing the oils into a container when, again, I've been been using them a while. So I just kind of go straight out of the tube. Continuing again, this doesn't have... We, we're not doing white with this. We're using the brilliant yellow pale. Now, outside heat doesn't really bug me or anything like that. Not, not really an issue. I've, I've seen it really wipe out some folks, though. My goodness. All right, so trying to get the impression of some scales on there. That's all, at least for right now. And I know for folks that maybe they're not comfortable doing the, the oils from you know beginning to end like we always do here, there is nothing that says you can't just let it dry and either pick it up again with the oils if you don't want to do the wet into wet, or you could just, I don't know, grab the acrylics and paint over the top because when the oils are dry, they're dry. That's it. Now, acid burn, you know, there's sort of an in-between, which I discovered, what is it? Uh, desperation is the mother of invention. So for Adepticon, there was no way I could mix 100 or whatever, the 60 or 70 uh, of these paints. All I did was I cheap little watercolor things, right, for kids' classes. I just stuck a little bit of paint in there, a drop or two of thinner, took a brush, mixed it up, and I was able to get all these done in just a matter of minutes instead of several more minutes so to speak so that's one way to kind of go uh, in between uh, those are also pretty darn cheap i just got them off of amazon they might even be in you know michael's or whatever too okay i'm trying to do some scales here on mr uh, serpent slash dragon i mean dragons don't always have to have uh, wings right or now uh, you're because like Chinese, is it Chinese dragons that don't have wings, I think? Yeah, I don't think Chinese dragons have wings. They're more like serpents. So I would definitely, uh, if you still wanted to have some pre-thin paints, and the nice thing is acid burn, you just don't need to use a lot of paint, right? Or a lot of thinner for that matter. Yeah, Lamines. Now, the other thing that you can use uh, if you want a, a super permanent solution, I guess is that's the term I'm looking for, you could use nail polish containers. 
Now, here's one that I made six years ago, and that is actually still viable in there. That was six years ago. And, uh, well, there you go, acid burn, yep. Uh, well, the nice thing about those, uh, the container, what is that, the nail polish things, is they're pretty much designed to not tip over. Uh, they're pretty sturdy. They're pretty darn airtight. Also, uh, they have a little brush thing in them. That, again, that's the the reason why I got those is because they reminded me of the Mig Ammo oil brushers. Now, let's, let's, let's get some more lights over here. Uh, oh, gee whiz, yeah, back here for sure. Uh, we're running a little shy on our lights there. Little bit shy on the lights. Yes, I think now we've got our basically our lightest lights there. Uh, I guess one of the key things uh, Lamines is to, and when you watch the videos, you'll hear me say, I strongly, strongly advise that you. Now you could mix them. I just have these blister packs because of all the dark sword miniatures and such. You, you could mix it in in these as well. You know, something like that, something that's soft and disposable and I just uh, stick the thinner in there uh, I take my brush and I just mix it together with the brush I mean you could use a spatula or something too I guess but I generally just use a brush now let's get a bit of this fanchion red potentially a little bit of the fluorescent orange Is that enough dark? I think we've got... Uh... No, I'm going to go a little darker. I might even use... Oh, look at that. We're even going to use a little bit of our other red. That's the alternate. That's the Richeson Naphthol red. Just to make that a little darker around the eyes there. Or the uh, eye sockets, I should say. What else uh, on the flames here? I don't want to go too dark with those. I think we'll just uh, we'll say that's good enough. Now here, I might see what I can do for uh, a little bit of freehand on that. I, I'm guessing I need to thin this down. It's the Indian yellow, brilliant yellow pale. And uh, what we're looking to do, uh, see the little ruins there that go across the freehand design? Let's uh, here, let me get that back out here again so people can see that. I see a couple areas here. Whoops, wrong, wrong pile. This pile. The other thing that we do with the freehand sometimes is a little bit of just stippling instead of a typical brush stroke like that. I'm looking at the tail here. Uh, first of all, need some light on that. Second of all, hopefully to get a little bit of scale texture on there. Something like that. So again, the uh, with the oil stuff, every single miniature basically starts the same way. Now, some pre-glazes are going to be more complicated than others. But everything starts just how we did here, right? You've got your miniature, not too light, not too dark primer, some kind of neutral color to it. We throw the initial darker colors that are also staining colors, and then we go back in and we start to, well, we refine. We start adding mid-tones, we start adding even more darks. So something like this, the pre-glaze on this was indigo and Prussian blue, as you can imagine. And then we took the uh, radiant blue and put that over the top. So this was our newest chapter studies video, which was entirely different from the Blood Angels video. Well, we started out with a pre-glaze of pearling black, which is a dark green. Seriously. Red Blood Angel, dark green pre-glaze on that. Uh, it was just to kind of show a little something. Let me see if we can do this here. I'm going to start off in the most what, recognizable, visible area here. I think we've got that just about the right thinness. Jack, nice to see you again. So that's two nights in a row. Yeah, Jack, the 
Believe it or not, we only started two hours and 21 minutes ago. Yeah. Now, another late start uh, started basically at the Thursday time of around 11.35. So there could be some weird start times, uh, Jack. Don't be surprised if you might see me, well, during the day, my time. So it's, it's very possible. I make no promises uh, about that. It's kind of like, uh, okay, here's a window of opportunity. Boom. I'll just try streaming. But, uh, well, the, the, the late night streams, at least for the very near future, those are a little bit difficult because I kind of have to be, well, let's see. No matter what, I'll have to be awake in six hours for sure potentially even four or five it kind of depends now let's uh see we never really did uh get our uh, see i don't want to do the terra rosa up there i am going to try and get some uh oh look at this look at this we got radiant violet we got egyptian violet we'll make violet <laughs> that's that's uh that right there you don't get that kind of analysis on any other channel we're going to mix this violet and another violet and make violet. Why? Because we love having a little bit of violet, a little bit of green in our golds. Also here, we got Zippo for reflected light here. We want more than that. Now, actually, Bithron, do you have any pictures of the, of the Flames of War stuff at all? I, I completely spaced. Uh, I was going to ask you, <clears throat> you know, if you had, uh, if you took any pictures while you guys were playing. Uh, I totally spaced on, uh, spaced on that. So sorry, but hopefully you get to do that again. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. All right. So again, that's. There's barely any yellow in any of this. You got greens in it. Now we had just added some violets in there. There's almost no yellow in any of this stuff here. That's uh, <laughs> that's what you call advanced degree, right, uh, Thranuel? Uh, that is uh, advanced level stuff right there. We're going to take a violet, mix it into another violet, and make violet. Because, of course, that's how we roll. Yeah, we're just, uh, we're just all kinds of genius here. Bam, there we go. And, of course, uh, while... Where, the, where, did he, where are you hiding? You're, ah, there you are. So I think for folks that were, were around last night's stream, we talked about the uh, the what character in Middle Earth would you be? And people always ask me that. And I just I usually revert to a Faramir or something like that. And Kathy determined that it would not be Faramir. <laughs> this, this would be my... Don't be hasty, little hobbits. Don't be hasty. Uh, are you an orc? So yeah, somehow, <laughs> Treebeard, that would be my Middle Earth character. Uh, I knew it weren't going to be a hobbit and elf or a dwarf. And movie Aragorn is very different than book Ara uh, Aragorn, so too many differences there. So we thought, well, maybe Faramir. And then, then she said, no, not uh, when you're on stream, you're basically Treebeard. So Treebeard it is. We are, well, let's see, we were, uh, so we started talking, Thranio, about old Entish. And... So instead of speaking it, so whenever I write somebody a text message, I'll just have to write like a thousand words just to say hello. And I'll just say that that's old Entish. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll just I'll say, I'm going to speak in old Entish, an Entish and it'll be a, a thousand word text on just uh, saying hello. Because uh, that won't aggravate anybody.
Now, Bithron, now, of course, we, uh, <laughs> what would I want to be? I would want to be uh, Prince Imrahil or something like that, right? Because uh, Prince Imrahil, that is that is a bad ombre right there. You don't mess with Prince Imrahil. Now, of course, not all Ents are as, you know, kind of deliberate as Treebeard. You've got Quickbeam. We did debate, could I actually be leaning more towards a quick beam instead of a, instead of tree beard? We don't know, but what we do know is that Pascal is in the chat. Pascal, how are you doing? Everybody, please give Pascal a follow because Pascal is a fantastic painter. And you'll, you'll kind of find that out because Pascal is going to be posting some Instagram links to all of his latest stuff. So you're going to... Go uh, check out for yourself what a fantastic painter Pascal is. So Pascal, please uh, please pop uh, your Instagram link there in the chat so everybody can check that out and just let folks know when your stream or your next stream is going to be too, if you know. Now Bithron, that that's one of the reasons why I've been just dying to read the darn books because. Obviously, you don't get to see anything of Prince Imrahil, and even in those lore videos, all you get to see is, well, he wasn't in the books, or he wasn't in the movie. You don't really get to actually see many videos about what Prince Imrahil did outside of kind of taking command of the defenses of Minas Tirith. Ah, there we go. So everybody, please check out the link. For Pascal, please follow Pascal. You're going to be super glad that you did. Because Pascal does uh, absolutely... And you'll see, just go check out the Insta link there and you'll see how amazing Pascal is. Uh, so Pascal, we're having a little bit of fun here as usual with some, some of our objects. Source lighting, of course. Ah, uh, see, Thranuel, that was, we we debated that one too. That was, uh, that was also another one. And it was, it was kind of a close thing. Uh, we thought because of the, the voice and just kind of how, uh, Treber interacted with the hobbits and, and such. We thought, well, maybe, uh, maybe it would have to be Treebeard there. Ah, uh, thanks, Pascal. Uh, we've been doing this on our Easterlings just the, all the way straight on through, even even if it's some of the newer stuff like the Acolytes and these guys, or the the conversions right here that we did. And of course, uh, somewhere up here is the Beefy Chiefy. Let me see if we can drag him down. It's, ah, there he is. There he is. So this is a sculpt that we did because, well, we wanted to uh, we wanted to have a uh, Easterling themed Mordor troll chieftain. So uh, that was really fun to sculpt that, and obviously gave us a lot of room to uh, paint some some freehand on there, didn't it? Now Bithron, uh, well, we wouldn't mind Tom Bombadil either, right? Now, of course, I don't sing too many songs. Uh, I I do wear a hat all the time. Uh, did, he wore the crazy yellow, or was it yellow boots? No, he wore the hat with the feather and the yellow boots, right? That was uh, that was his deal. Now, of course, Treebeard also does, well, his are more po uh, poems rather than songs, I think. Uh, I don't know uh, if Ents really sing so much. They make a lot of noises. All right, there we go. So you get a little bit more of our light in there. So uh, I, I yeah, don't have too many yellow boots. Not too many yellow boots that I've ever worn. We just kind of uh, also, too, from a visual standpoint, <laughs> Yeah, who, who is what are you closer to visually? Is it closer to Gandalf, Treebeard, whatever? 
I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm covered in moss and leaves anyway, so maybe maybe that works too. And thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting the link to the Patreon page, as always. As always. I do think the next video that I film is going to be another in the Army Painting series. It's going to be Episode 3 of Series 31. Also, though... We've got a basing video coming up because Green Stuff World sent not one, not two, but three new texture rollers. So we're going to do, I think we'll do a new video with all three. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be interesting because Baking Scopey, well, I think it's going to be not so warm next week. So Baking Scopey won't be so bad. But uh, yeah, aside from everything else this week, it was in the 90s, so... Baking Scopey, not so much. Thank you so much, Cobra Rex. I appreciate that. So Cobra Rex, happy, well, Sunday now. It, it used to be a happy Saturday. Now it's a happy Sunday. There's our lights along the top there. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my Thank you so much, Cobra Rex. I appreciate that. Here, let's go with, uh, let's go with Meaner Mori again. Off. It's like, Dude, man, it, you, you can just chill out. They do a little bit of that weed. He's like, no, no, this is what happens. But this is what happens when you're off the weed, man. You're like, you're alert and you're paranoid. And you're, he's like, dude, I think you should have yourself a smoke. So thank you so much, Cobra Rex. Appreciate that. Uh, so Bithron, all, all I keep thinking of is how he was represented, right? With, uh, well, let's just say he had a little something on his hat. But of course, uh, he he sort of just uh, he just kind of uh, kind of lost track of things and just uh, kind of communed with nature, so to speak, right? Boss Muppet, he's like, uh, well, this is a puppet show. Are you saying are you saying we're Muppets? Uh, I don't think so. I'm made of resin. I'm made of metal. Muppets aren't made of resin or metal. So thank you so much, Boss Muppet. Appreciate that. Now, of course, uh, some people, they said, well, wouldn't you be something like Aomir or something like that because of the whole never rode a bike but rode horses all the time when I was, when I was younger? So there was, there was even that contemplated, a little bit of horse lord right there. Always loved riding horses. Boy, it's been a long time since I've done that. Now, Bithrot, now, of course, if we could just get back to uh, still keep up with our 2D art, we would have backdrops, right? He's like, phew, we could take care of that in no time. Because, you know, we would just ask somebody for more gunpowder, right? And just, uh, like, take this thing out. And he says, uh, and by the way, who designed this door? Like, shouldn't you have a gatehouse around that? Gosh, we're just going to have to paint uh, Isengard again so that we can do our Saruman puppet shows. I always love doing the Saruman puppet shows. Uh, Thranuel, I just did one. Uh, well, it wasn't necessarily quite so much with the jungle foliage, but I have a bunch of different ones. There was, uh... oh yeah, that's right, we've got some of these guys here. And I do believe this one is actually just on the YouTube channel right here. This is uh, some Warcry miniatures, so there's that. There's a couple of Dark Sword bases, I think, uh, Thranuel, where we do some uh, also some jungle-style basing. Yeah, thanks for doing the clip there, Bithron. Boy, that that's oh, well. I don't I don't want to say that's a sign things are returning to normal, but that that's like one of the most uh, appreciated signs. There is that uh, clips, right? Clips mean that we're streaming, and us streaming is a darn good thing. Now, what we also need to do is get a little more reflection. 
Here, that's that same green color. See, that's a chain of lights here. Now, let's uh, do something here on the boots. On DOS boots, and we'll just grab, I don't know, something here that we can use to create a little bit of a transition. I'm just looking for some paper towels here. Well, we'll just use this. We'll just use that, and I just want to make sure we get some of the paint off of that. I'm going to take this coat. I'm just going to push that around. Now, let's get a little bit of light over here, shall we? And that might uh, take the form of a wee bit of violet and a touch of that green. Makes radiant gray. Bam, there we go. Didn't take much, and it's not a, it's not going to have that dry brush texture. Why? Because it's mixy. You can see some of that darker color is on the brush here. Now, let's see if we can make some lighter blues here. Just some lighter blue. You know what? I'll just use this thing here. Uh, let's just use this. Radiant turquoise. Yeah, let's use that. I don't know. I'm going to thin it down some more. If I can. Like so. And we'll do some more here. There. Ah, uh, actually, Bithron, uh, <laughs> it's funny you should mention that. I thought Twitch had changed something where it'd say, okay, you know, I knew that you had done a clip just because I saw it. And I thought, oh, there's no little thumbnail there. So, yeah, I thought it was just Twitch had changed something. It's it's not like Twitch never changes things on us, right? All right, there's a little bit more of that later stuff. We're just going to find ourselves. Our, there's our blending brush that we had used before. So we got this later stuff here. We're just going to do this. We're not doing that. We're literally just going up and down, doing a little bit of stippling there. Same thing here. See, we're just kind of doing something like that. Ooh, uh, uh, I can get some, I can maybe even reflect a little bit of bluish uh, something in there. I might try to do that too, but first, I'm going to do something like this. And we've got a belt over here that we're going to try and do. I'm actually going back to my radiant violet and uh, there. Nope, nope, nope. That would have been a little too light here. We're going to grab some of that. Well, there's more of that uh, violet. I'm going to take violet and violet and make more violet. That's just, uh, again, that is next level stuff right there. All right. Trousers there. Maybe a smidge of some light on the staff here. I know there was somebody that posted a whole bunch, speaking of staff or stats uh, somebody posted a whole bunch of stuff from the from the war in the north book i wonder uh, if, if gw saw that and kind of made that get taken down and we'll lighten this up a little more ah super lazy how you doing ah no boy nice to see you again super lazy I hope that you've been doing well. Uh, super lazy, that is the goal, to have every army of Middle-earth, including uh, legendary legions. Now, of course, the 3D printing is what makes that possible. I mean, it, was, it wasn't even a thought until the 3D printing came along and everybody's doing everything. So then it became possible to have every army of Middle-earth. I mean, look at this. We've even got, uh, I think this is from Kurzlik right here. So that's his version of Azog. So we might, uh, I've actually had him out and ready for, for, who knows, maybe we paint that. If I get to do a stream tomorrow, maybe that's the one that we're painting. I don't know. Uh, again, expect anything and everything as far as stream times and stream durations and what we might be streaming itself. It's all going to be very, very random, at least at least for the next week, possibly 
two. Now, of course, uh, we have the Defense of the North Fund. That's uh, so that we can try and get the latest Easterling releases. Now, uh, the other stuff uh, like Dale and the the Bears and all that kind of stuff. I already have three D printed stuff of that, so not necessarily needing those guys. Uh, I think we could, we have plenty between printing goes ever on Diwali, Medbury, and everything else. I mean, look. Where's our stag riders here? We've got like, well, here, Kurz look, you know, uh, Mumox, right? We just don't need to, uh, we can do all of that stuff. And of course, the Medbury doors. We're painting this guy last night right here. A little bit of object source lighting there, of course. So the, the 3D printing option really does make it possible. Makes me glad, that's for sure. All right, I might even do something like this here. We're going to take some of the white here, some of the uh, fluorescent. Okay, and what I'm trying to do is actually just get that kind of filled in here in some way if I can. Paint is uh, quite thick, that's for sure. There we go. Now we got it. See, so then do another one of these over there, and another one over there. So there are a much uh, more intense light there. Where are fire sources, of course? Oh, thanks so much, Lethal Shadows. Appreciate that. I think I've been painting this particular type of color scheme for my Easterling army since at least 2010, possibly even before then. So yeah, we've been, wow, that's, that's almost, well, not almost, that would be a dozen years, uh, kind of continuing that same sort of color scheme for the Easterlings. And thank, thanks to the new releases, uh, well, that, that will continue for at least another year or so. I'm going to make that, yeah, I'm going to carry the light further back. We're also going to catch some light on the edge of this here. Bam, there we go. Uh, if you look at the blog, you'll actually see the tournament prep. Well, here, let's see where are the... But it's been a while since I've seen it, so I have to take a look at I don't know which one of these two it is. Where are they at? We'll get there. Well, here's our old, uh, well, here's our, East, our new Easterling army, which we have been adding to like crazy, right? But then we also have somewhere around here, ah, nope, not that one. Here we go. So see those, uh, the Gandalf hat trophies there? That was for Bilbo's Bash. Those were for a best painted army and a, some individual figures. I think it was best cavalry and best team, something like that. But that was from Bilbo's Bash. That was my, well, actually the bolt action tournament I liked too because it was run by the same people. So that was really cool. Really enjoyed that. Hey, Laman S, thanks for doing that because we haven't done one. Seriously, we haven't done a film noir yet. Of course, we're only, we're not even three hours in, I, which I, it seems like it should be more. All right. This should be interesting to see. Watch what happens. Zoink. I mean, you can get a sense that there's a light source there, even with the black and white. But then all of a sudden you say, well, I don't know, there's shading here. Now look at this. This is the big thing. It pretty much looks identical, right? Uh, watch what happens here. This should be fun. This should be very interesting. Oh, my goodness looks a little different doesn't it that the shading doesn't look any different but the colors huge difference in the colors right and of course here um, blue red right blue reflecting this the red I mean we got this big red banner thing or whatever right by his armor how is it not reflected uh, well let's do a bonus film noir 
shading yes but that that bit of blue right there is gone totally gone because it's not any lighter or darker than what's around it but what it is is a different color you see that spot of blue there and that's that's basically this thing reflecting over there uh, so lethal shadows it comes out way more frequently now uh, this is my interpretation of kind of how things played out so they kind of redid the game and they launched the battle of pelinor fields box set i want to say three years ago i think it's been three years since the new box set came out and they did not anticipate the reaction uh, they were short of everything because people went berserk that lord of the rings was back with new new miniatures with uh, you know kind of cleaned up rules new scenarios all that sort of stuff and then they started to realize that you know we did pay a lot for this ip maybe we should actually do something with it and they actually started to do things with it and guess what it sells right the all the new character miniatures and such so we're i'm happy i'm glad Uh, I think it's just going to be more and more frequent because, uh, well, what they did was they created legendary legions. So it's very possible that the, uh, what, what is it, that dragon emperor, you might have to have this, that, or the other thing in, as part of his army or not have certain other things uh, to have the maybe the legendary legion that has him in it. But it's a way for them to add some new characters, some new miniatures, and, and such. So kind of ingenious without having to create a new faction. They create a new faction. Now, that needs... Now, I won't do any more reflective light there just yet. Not just yet. What I am going to do, though... See if this here is going to work out. Well, we got some red in there somehow. It's uh, either some of our Fanchon red or whatever got in there, but it's a little bit of the Indian yellow. And the idea is something like this. Because there's uh, some sharp trend, well, non transitions there. Not much in the way of transitions. We'll get some more here. Uh, so thanks, Lemon S, for the film noir. Obviously, uh, well, Valfira was technically really should have been asleep before this even started, but I think they might have had some guests or something like that. So there was no time to do a Lam, uh, to do a Valfira film noir. So much obliged. Let me. Uh, I'm looking no no still a shadow caster. I think we're okay here. Don't need to do too much light on the wooden part. Obviously trying to make oh I almost forgot. Almost forgot to do these. Right, and I might go back to this. It's a little bit of a dingier color. There we go. And we're gonna do the same on these guys. Uh, so, Pascal, what is your latest latest project? Uh, I know that you've... Uh, I, did you also... Uh, I think you won an award, too, if I remember right, Pascal. I'm pretty sure that you won an award. Well, maybe maybe a couple of awards and a couple of different contests. So, if you wanted to show those off. And just, uh, again, let folks know just all the really fantastic miniatures that you paint. All right, Lamines, thank you so much. And again, Lamines, I really appreciate uh, just being able to message back and forth, even if it's just saying, well, I'm waiting, right? Just to be able to express that, that was really huge. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much for just sometimes letting me send you non nonsense messages. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's do the dark under here. And thanks, Lethal Shadow. Uh, again, appreciate Chibi and uh, thanks so much for the the kind wishes as well. That you know that's appreciated. So good night to Luminous. Good night to Lethal Shadows. So Lethal Shadows, uh, if if I can give you a bit of a heads up for when we might be streaming tomorrow, I'll, I'll do that. And who knows, maybe uh, if we can, maybe we might uh, hit either tomorrow or Monday the next of the Lethal Shadows gaming miniatures. Uh, that, oh, there we go. Everybody, please. Uh, uh, oh, wow. Uh, geez, Pascal, I didn't know that uh, Hassle Free did any kind of a Star Wars theme miniatures. Wow, that's. Uh, I actually have. I still have the old, old, old Hassle Free miniatures. Like Hassle Free in 2003, 2004. Still got me some of those. And then, of course, I have a whole bunch of Kev White uh, Keltos figures. Actually, Pascal, did you ever paint any of the old Keltos figures? Because I have some of those. And, well, my original plan was to basically kind of make my... Since the Keltos system just kind of died and never, never got to enjoy a full existence... I was going to take some Keltos figures and then, well, other figures. Now it will be 3D printed stuff and just kind of do my own system, uh, kind of a conglomeration of probably a little bit of Keltos, a little bit of Lord of the Rings, and a little bit of Wild West Exodus. Kind of combine all three together. Yeah, now they're they're really old. Again, they go back a long, long ways. And obviously, compared to maybe today's standards, they're they're very different as far as you know what you normally see today. But they were always some of my faves back in the day. The the nifty thing was that I could do lots of well non-metallic metal on them, lots of tattoos, and also. As I start to add some lights into my gold here, all right, like along the edge there. Let's do a little more here. Oh yeah, see we got to get some lights here, but then possibly on the other side of the leaf or the scale armor here, we might need to get some more darks. It's possible. It's very possible. Now, same down here. Boom. Right there again. We want that uh, trail of, uh, that chain of highlights there, or chain of darks, either way. But uh, when you have segmented armor like that, you're certainly going to want that little chain of stuff. So I'm pretty sure, at least for the next few streams, we'll have maybe smaller individual figs like this just so that we can, if need be, have a shorter stream. Which is funny because, you know, to me I look up, okay, it's, now it's almost three hours, all right? I was like, two and a half hours, that's not a stream. That ain't no stream, that's a, that's an introduction, an old Entish. Ah, see what I did there? More of our light on our oh yeah, let's get a little more going on with our dragony guys there and let's see if we can do a little bit of something here on these metals because we got if that was just cloth or something like that or leather, okay. But I need a little bit more in the way of reflections here. If it's going to be gold, if it's going to be shiny, gots to get some reflections. <laughs> 